testing, testing. You know, it says built in, it still looks good. Okay, so good, sounds good. You can hear me good. We're gonna get started here. We got volume, says Drew, thank you. There is sound, says Robin, thank you, sound. Thank you, Robin. I didn't, yeah, I changed the start time on the invite. Thanks, I sent that out or we sent that out. Okay, cool, we got everything going there. Um, let's go ahead and get started. We got, the, so we got some awesome questions that came in and I got some good content to really cover today. So um, let's get started, shall we? Alrighty, welcome to the Calls of Coaching Call. It is March 15th, 2016. Did I get the year right? I was thinking for a second, maybe I didn't get the hour right today, so maybe I didn't get the year right, but I'm, I'm good there. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, what I want to talk to you about right now, just a little bit of glimpse on here. I had, um, had a, uh, been having some really good digital nomad friends over the past, uh, I don't know, we've been, you know, for the past year and a half or so, uh, make their way through Barcelona and spent two or three months, which has been wonderful, and uh, had a had a recent friend come to, to town. Um We've had dinner a couple of times and then uh, thought I would introduce him to some of my Barcelona friends that I've made here. So we had a dinner on the beach. It was fantastic. Um, and uh, my friend is, is extremely successful. Um, he runs uh, some very successful Amazon stores uh, in the upwards of millions and millions and millions of dollars per year. Um, and um, so anyways, um, I wanted to kind of match up the friends a little bit, uh, and I don't mean necessarily the income, but the perspective. And, um, so that's what I want to talk to you about right now is perspective. Cause it was really quite interesting to me. Um, I got a, a good uh, mix of friends. Uh, we were eating and invite them out to dinner. And, um, one of them, uh, the one that I'm going to be talking about now, I'm not going to name any names, um, actually spoke on Ted talk. So if you get a chance to speak on Ted talk, you know, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and the person that did that is an owner of a business that does a co uh, co working share space, which is pretty popular and has, uh, several of them in Europe. Um, and actually, that's how I met him is that when I first came to Barcelona, things run a little bit slower here in Spain when we moved into our new place. Um, we didn't have, you know, it took three months to get Internet access. <laughs> if you can believe that. And um, anyways, um, so I had to find a good space that had it. And that's how I found it. Anyways, um, I consider him a very successful person. And um, there was a few times during the, it was a very long dinner, like four hours, um, that, um, my friend, um, he's actually from the States, uh, but he's been traveling for a long time. I actually firstly met him when he came out to my Hong Kong event, uh, for the taxes and stuff. Cause you know, he's obviously has tax issues. He's paying too much taxes. So anyways, um, my friend who was on Ted talk owns, you know, a substantial business um he would just make certain comments and then my friend and i would kind of look at each other and kind of give each other that kind of look like um how do i describe it it's kind of like it's it's hard to describe but it's a perspective thing it's like um when when I look from the time I was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the big five zero now. That's so amazing to even think about. Um, and I look back, I, I and I and I belong to a face group group with my uh, graduates from high school. And um, anyways, if they look old. I don't. I just don't feel fifty. But anyways, um, so we're. we're we're, we're talking, but it, it wasn't until I, I look, I, I made less than 40 grand a year. That was the most I ever made, uh, up until I was 41 years old. My entire life, the maximum I made was $40,000 in a year. The max <laughs> ever. I mean, that's, that's crazy. You know, um, I make that in three or four days now. Um, I'm not bragging, but perspective has changed a lot. Um, so I remember thinking back then um, that if I just made 
$10,000 a month, I would be like, I would have all these freedoms and life would just, curtains would pull back and life would just change. And, you know, that's $120,000 a year. And I remember to, at that period in my life, um, going to a get together um, with a friend of mine and um, he was very successful, I would say like college successful. So you can, uh, you know, you can make a living if you go to college and get good grades, all that kind of stuff, but you can really make freedoms when you, you know, self-educate yourself. But um, so he was, I don't know, he, he's been like probably about $140,000, $150,000 a year. And his wife is doing pretty well. So they, they brought in about a quarter million, $300,000 a year, uh, you know, before taxes. Um, and I remember every time I went over to their house, it just like, I don't know. I just had this weird feeling. It was like, it was like, wow, it's just, it, it was just like so untouchable to me. I don't know if any of you can relate to that. And I was just like, it was like, it, 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 just the perspective. It was like, it was like their ceilings everywhere were like three or four feet taller than in my house. And it was like, you know, the hallways were wider and everything was just bigger and cleaner and felt safer. And every room was like evenly air conditioning. It was just like, I don't know. I just never felt comfortable in that home. My friend wasn't pretentious. He didn't, you know, flaunt money or even talk about it. None of that kind of stuff. And um, he clearly knew that I didn't make you know, a fraction of what, you know, I made an entire year, probably what he made in two or three months. Um, that's just him, not including his wife. And it was just very, always very uncomfortable. And then his circle of friends um, pretty much made very similar money. You know, they all had huge swimming pools in their backyards with the slides, that, you know, these, you know, they had these little water slides that go down and stuff. And, you know, and I, quite frankly, our backyard was just, it was just weeds, <laughs> really. Um, and that perspective was tough. It, um, I wasn't, I was kind of envious, but then I was kind of felt like I was kind of ripped off a bit or kind of juped. I don't know if that's even a word people use anymore. Juped, ripped off, uh, got the short end of the stick. I just, th that was my perspective. That's just kind of the way I felt. And it was feelings. So they were really strong. And it was kind of hard to put words to those feelings, but they were really strong. I mean, it like affected every fiber in my body, you know. Um, and I, it, it, and it, was a, it was an uncomfortable it was very uncomfortable. I remember that. I was always trying to relax and be around my friend and all this kind of stuff, but it was very uncomfortable. I always felt like I couldn't really be myself. I really couldn't be good. Um, you know, so perspectives are really important. Um, there was a, a question one of my friends posted on Facebook the other day. It was kind of interesting. It, was, it gave two scenarios, and which one would you fit in? And scenario one was um, work two hours a day, I think four days a week, and make $350,000 a year or something like that. Versus working 50 hours a week, but making $3.8 million per year. Which would you want to do, A or B? And I'm just curious. Let me open up a chat box here if anyone there's paying attention to my little story there. Which would you rather be? Would you rather be the two hour a week, five days a week, making three hundred eighty thousand dollars a year, three hundred or whatever, or B making three point eight million dollars working sixty hours or fifty hours a week? Yeah. So the there's not any wrong or right answer. Just kind of interesting what your initial gut reaction is. It says a lot about your perspective about money. Um, and everybody, uh, and this was, this is Jason Moffat. Some of you know, he's a, he's a pretty well-known marketer, but, um, so he has a good active, you know, followers on his Facebook page. And so there's a, you know, I don't know, hundreds of comments and 
unanimously they were all A, the two hours a week. And I think that's hugely flawed. And the reason I think it's flawed is, is, is just from reality. It's from my own experience. So this is my perspective on that and, and why I think it's flawed. It's dangerously flawed. And it's the same reason that, um, that somebody very well known named their book the four hour work week. It's just even though, even though he's very known for working 60, 70, 80 hours a week <laughs> or more. Okay. Um, is, is that first perspective, it, 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 it meshes into two, it combines two things that are highly deadly to your success and your success and your freedom. And that is number one, the two hours per day, the, you know, the four to eight hour work week, that a feeds into that folks. That's a freaking fallacy. If I ever heard one, I, I, I am now fortunate enough to be in a position where I have very successful people come and visit me or just come in to Barcelona and then we visit. Okay. My friend, when he came out to the Hong Kong event, uh, it was a five day event. He was so busy. He couldn't attend an event once. He could only attend after five days being there, the very last group dinner, which was for like two hours. And that was it. And then he was out of plane, he was gone. The guy makes like $20 million a year. Okay. I've never seen anybody make a ton of money and not be, and not just, I mean, literally work like 15 hours plus per day. I I just, I just never seen it. So that first answer that two hours falls into that whole dream. It's a bunch of baloney, this four or five hour a a week stuff. It's baloney. It's garbage. You can't do it. So that's the one fallacy that flaws into that perspective. The other one is, is that, uh, is this whole notion, this, these about the things that people have with money. It's like the comments are like, well, the, you know, the other person would have more time and quality with family and, you, you know, once that time is gone, you can't buy it. You know what? That's all a load of crap. Seriously. I want you right now to be honest with yourself. I want you to imagine yourself eight hours a day during the week spending with your relatives in your house. And now Saturday and Sunday full time with them. Does that sound like any fun to you? Come on. I mean, be real, you know, and then what are you doing? You just working two or three hours. I mean, what's your passion? Also, that's another fallacy too. But I mean, what drives you? What moves you? Uh, it just mixes two things. And it, and it comes to this really sick, poor perspective on money. There's a really interesting video. I need to go out and find it again. It, it took the entire population and said, what if our entire population in the world was just hundred people and it, you know, proportionally equaled it. So here's a hundred people, right? So out of the hundred people, um, it's really fascinating how many people were white, how many people were black and 73 out of a hundred were Asian, by the way. Um, um, how many spoke English. And then when it came down to income, it was shocking. It was like 85 people out of hundred. Again, if this was the entire population was, was just proportionally shrunk down to hundred people. It was like 85 people only made $2 or less per day. And it was like one person made over $90 a day. It's like the, the imbalance that's going on is crazy. Uh, and it puts things in perspective, which anyways. Um, so you really need to look at your own perspective um, on money, on success on here. Uh, because even though my friend who's highly successful, been on TED Talk, owns these businesses all over Europe. He's got this mentality about money and stuff. And then, and I'm looking over at my friend and we kind of realized that, wait a minute, his business is not running even at full throttle, not with this mental outlook that he has. And, and we kind of traced it back to his father and his, and his upbringing. Uh, they were very poor growing up and didn't have much. Um, 
And when you get that way, two things kind of happen. I've seen it happen before. People come into a lot of money all of a sudden. They can earn it. But but they like in this day and age, you can get online. You can do it right. And you just pop up. You get $200,000 like right there. And then people feel guilty and they sabotage themselves. And it's like a thermometer. They go back to their original temperature. I've seen it in mastermind groups happen over and over again. This, this whole, th- I mean, people talk about, oh, we got to communicate with each other to have healthy relationships. What about communicating with yourself about your perspective on money and wealth? It's so sticky and dynamic. I mean, when I, when I went into my friend that spoke on TED Talk and he's got these co-working spaces and I was there for a few months, I posted some stuff and they have their own Facebook group about, uh, I posted some kind of article about money and all this kind of perspective on it. And man, that group, I, I thought it was all a bunch of people who are working online and have their own business and stuff. And I thought I'm speaking to my own kind, like a bunch of entrepreneurs. They came down on me so freaking hard. I mean, they're just coming at me like, yeah, money is the, literally like comments, like the money is the root of all evil. Um, you know, if this kind of perspective on here, you're not going to gain any happiness in life. I'm going like, what the frick is going on? I totally misjudge these entrepreneurs over here in Spain. Anyways, um, you, you really, really, I see it all the time. I, I see people all the time and I just, and, and, and I was at the perspective before up until I was 41 years old. I'm like in friends' houses, and they make. I'm, I just, I never felt comfortable. I felt comfortable around my neighbors because we all poor. <laughs> Obviously, they live next to me, so they probably make just about as much as I do, right? And I felt more comfortable around that. And there's a really good book I'm reading. I know I'm kind of rambling, but just bear with me. Um, this is really, this is actually, th- this kind of perspective stuff is more important than the stuff I'm about to share with you. But the stuff I'm about to share with you is going to be extremely good but but it means nothing if you don't have the right perspective I mean, seriously and i know people talk about it and, and we've we've all heard that before right you're the combination and what did jim rose say you're the combination of the top five or six or ten people to hang out with it's totally 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 true and if you don't get that you gotta you gotta stop freaking out um when i get that book off of here i got to Man, the audiobooks are just, I'm loving this audiobooks because it's, it, certainly it, it takes so much longer to read a book, but if you can do the audio, it's just, you can get through so much more information. It was time. Okay, so um, Originals um, by Adam Grant. Originals by Adam Grant. It's a really fascinating audiobook. It's an easy to listen to, it's really good. But he's talking about how people, um, studying different people in different societies, how when this, like, uh, like when this, the society started to go down, the government started to do uh, monetary control, they start taking away the freedoms. It, it doesn't happen overnight. It just kind of slowly creeps in. Even though people's lifestyle and their quality and their income and everything is going down, and by the way, this is happening in the United States right now if, you don't, if you're not paying attention, um, people just slowly kind of adapt to it even though they're aware that things weren't as good as they used to be and things are kind of being taken away and the quality of life is going down. There's a, he, he has a hypothesis just by uh, viewing many people, I guess, that their perspective, there, there's a coping mechanism that allows you to accept that and so that you can lead a less stressful life. Um, and it just, it makes sense. I think a lot of people get into that mentality, you know, Hey, we don't have as much as the Joneses up, up on the top of the hill. Um, and that kind of hurts, but down here at the bottom hill is pretty good. We don't have running water and, you know, we got to go over to the creek and wash in the morning. But that's okay. It's natural water. It's cool. It's all right. It's a little chilly in the morning, but it wakes you up, you know, and you just kind of adapt and go with it, you know? So don't adapt too much to that stuff. Seriously. Um, you need to get around and hang around people who are um, in places you want to be. Uh, you want to be the dumbest pe- person in the room. And the, the, the natural tendency, especially for the entrepreneur mindset, which is what kills a lot of them, um, or they just end up burning out because they work so darn much all by themselves being the lone ranger, um, is they always want to be the smartest person in the room. You want to be the dumbest, most uninspiring person in the room. Seriously. 
Okay, well, we'll get on to this. But here, rich people believe I create my life. Poor people believe life happens to me. Man, I've been in a life happens me, uh, to me perspective since for 41 years of my freaking life. Absolutely. freaking uh, Rich people play the money game to win. Poor people play the money game not to lose. You ever do that? You ever think you're playing to win, but you're actually playing not to lose? I used to do that all the time. I still catch myself doing that. Think about that because that's a huge statement right there. You know, people might, you know, you might look at a, an investment opportunity or, or investing in your own education, you know, buying a course or maybe investing in an apartment complex or something like this. Um, and then you'll, you, you, you think you're playing to win, but you'll find a way. It's like, how could I lose at this? Oh, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose that money. Oh, if I invested 997 in this course and I would, what if it's just a big scam? Oh, it's probably just like everything. And you're playing not to lose, but you pat yourself in the back because you think you won. See, the, say you fool yourself. Rich people focus on the opportunities and poor people focus on the obstacles. I see that all the freaking time. Um, people just constantly complaining or just like, they're just finding reasons that something will not work. It's just like, they're experts at it. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah. You, you, you'll even hold out a solution. They're like, oh, yeah, that would work. But And then they'll just come right back. But what about this? You ever been around people like that? Run. <laughs> Run. Don't hang around them. You got to weed these people out of your lives, man. They're, they're pulling you down. Whether you realize it or not, your environment shapes and affects every... It affects... It affects your reality, period. It really, really does. And a lot of people don't think that, but it does. It's like, yeah, I could just go on and on about this kind of, anyways, here, let's go through this and get on. Um, uh, rich people associate with positive, successful people. Poor people associate with negative or unsuccessful people. And uh, that's what I started out talking about, right? I'm, I, I had my rich friend, but I just, I never felt comfortable or normal around him or around his house and his wife. They just, I just, I couldn't get past the fact that their shoes were always nicer. Their clothes were always, they always smelled good. Their hair was always neatly cut and trimmed. I just, it was everything. I was like, I just couldn't let go of it to relax. I don't know if you can relate to that or not, but, um, all right. So let's get started here. Um, there's two things I want to get out of the way and then get to the questions and then we'll, we'll go on to the main topic here. But um, Firefox profiles and confusion. I want to get this cleared up here because this, this shouldn't be that much. of it. Let me just check the question box. Make sure I got sound. I've just been everything's. Here, got my screen on, got my sound on. Um, in one second, here, folks. Shots pull. Uh, why is that not working? Uh, Use new hardware. Uh, no, not right now. Okay. So there we go. Boiling the frog. Yes. I'm clear. Okay, cool. All right. Just want to make sure we're cool there. Um, so this whole Firefox and the IP solution, people are, it, it's it's getting easily confused. So I want to try to add some clarity to that. Um, and if you go into module uh, two, right? Yeah, or module two at the very end here. Um, where it says uh, confused about how you use Firefox profiles, read me. So let's let's go over this, okay? Um, first of all, let, let me just break down really quickly the whole Firefox profile thing. Your first Firefox profile is the one for your money site. And we have to go under, this is all under the assumption that uh, Google's uh, gonna track every one of your steps and what you do. And for your profile, you want Google to do that. So your money profile for your money site, for your niche site, 
that one you want to log into your uh, your Gmail account that's been phone verified and just always keep it on and always follow me and track everything I do. Google, I mean, I'm here to be tracked. Just follow me what I do. I, I'm a little plumber side and I go out to my local plumber blogs and I interact with other plumbers and leave comments on their sites and 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 I'm um I'm active in my local community and I read the local on page newspaper and every once in a while I'll leave a comment. This kind of stuff is totally cool. Now that same profile going over to Call Zoo or Crowd Search or building private blog networks, that's not cool. You does that make does that that core concept make perfect sense? Because that that's against terms and services of the big G. So that's where you have it. That's where you maybe have your profile before you even, you know, before we even met. That one goes off and does all the naughty stuff, right? Um. So that's the core of it. And if you if you grasp that concept, then when you come up with like little kind of hiccups, like you get a proxy. Maybe you bought a proxy for Houston, but in the lower left-hand corner, Google thinks you're in California. As long as all as, as long as all the other things that we do check out, that's fine. Then just take my little hack, which is actually right here, um, and you'll just put in your your address. I'll show you how to do it, and then in the lower left-hand corner, it will then Google will then read it as Houston, and that's okay because that Firefox profile is being tracked by Google. You're telling them, hey, Google, I'm actually over here. And the reason Google has that is because they know they're not perfect with that stuff. And then, and, and then you just continue and you're building this profile that has this certain kind of behavior. And that's fine. So don't get all bent up about the, if the proxy doesn't exactly match on that. It's okay. So now let's step into Web 2.0s, okay? Um, and uh, and private blog networks. Those are easy. It, if you have two Tumblr accounts, okay, on the same Firefox and IP address, more than likely, Tumblr's gonna ban one of those or both of them. So uh, on a completely different, so this would be number two profile, um, your going to have a different Firefox profile with a different IP address. Could be anything within the same country that you're in, okay? You can have one of each with 2.0s and up to three domains for your Firefox or for your uh, private blog network, okay? That's if you just grasp that and just kind of let that settle in, then you can come up with any possible scenario that comes up in the future. You can derive the correct answer from that. Okay, so, um, so for your private blog network, this people are getting hung up on this. If you have one Firefox profile and you have three private blog networks associated with that one Firefox avatar, okay? When you register those domains, each of those domains have to have their own kind of avatar. They don't have to have their own Firefox profile and they don't have to have their own IP address. They can All that can be shared. But for the register information, it needs to be different. So it needs to have its own email, its own name, you know, Tom Jones or whatever, and you know one two three Main Street, blah blah blah. Here's my email, and then the email you want to, you know, because you're going to be getting ten twenty of these private blog networks. You just email all these registers of your domains. You just forward them to one so you can manage it on here. And I should have somewhere in here, somewhere in here, I've got a a a, a, a uh, I've taken a screenshot of when you register your domains. It's somewhere in the course. It's actually a couple places in the courses. But that's that's it. The only phone verified Gmail account that you want is the one for your money site. That's it. 
So let's go over a couple of other scenarios. They're all in here. If you've got, I, I highly recommend everyone, whenever you start, start in a state and then just stay within that state. If it has two or three larger cities, just get on page one for those two or three cities in that state. And at that point, Google's going to trust you. Just keep the same old darn profile and just grow like a natural company would, okay? And then the overall arching here is that we're all not Russian spies, okay? So don't treat this like we're Russian spies. Just chill out a little bit about it. It's okay, <laughs> all right? Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the question. I'm gonna move on to the next section. What's the next thing I wanted to talk about? Grant Cardone is cool, cool. He has a good perspective. Um, okay, the buying process of the private blog domains. Okay. So what's happening is that people are ordering their private blog networks. And by the way, you're an active member and you're not abusing this. We, you know, you're using it to, you know, hopefully link exchange with other members so we all rise together. Uh, but primarily, you know, just at a bare minimum, you're just using the private blog networks to link out to your your call Zoom money sites. You know, we want to see you succeed. Um, and we'll support you all along the way. There's, there's like not a limit or a one-time order or anything like that. Um, but anyways, what's happening is people are ordering them and we're like throwing out five or 10 at a time and people are not prepared and they're just sitting on them. Wake up. These are wide open. I mean, that's why they're like, you know, nine ninety nine at whatever register you want to buy them or whatever dot org or whatever it is anywhere, whatever the brand new domain of whatever extension is, wherever it is, whatever the lowest cost you can find cost, that's going to cost you. It's wide open to the marketplace. So someone else stumbles across this and there's other people out there, not just, I mean, there's the kind of software we have that scrapes this kind of information. This is not some little dinky software. Okay. This is like, it, it's, it's an army of people who run it and do this. And there are other armies of people in China, Japan that are doing the same darn thing we're doing because they know how valuable they are. Okay. And so though, and so you guys will, and gals out there will, you know, we're working our tails off to get you guys and gals, you know, five or 10 to start out with, you know, so you can start out strong. Um, and then you guys are sitting on them and then you're coming back and saying, well, I, I sat on them for four or five weeks. I'm thinking, what? Four or five weeks? Are you crazy? You can't do that. And like eight out of 10 are gone. Well, yeah, of course they're gone. <laughs> Cause each one of those sites is worth like on the open market between 50 and 200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be gone. So you need to go into module seven and you've got to watch all seven of the, uh, not seven, all 10 of the private blog net network videos that I put in there and all the little notes and stuff that I put down below that you expand out. And sometimes there's other videos in there. I mean, we put a lot of thought and effort into those. You got to go through those. You got to read them. You got to be fully prepared. Okay. So, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the questions and answers. Some good ones here. So, um, questions and answers are there. Um, any other proxy sources recommended? Uh, I put in three support tickets at anonymous proxies and never had a response. Now, this is very odd to me because you might want to check your spam folders uh, because we always get a response back. Um, I'm, I'm not an affiliate with them. They have no idea why their business has just gone up a whole bunch. Um, and everybody that I've seen in their Facebook group has always responded back positively that they, you know, they're going to respond back. Maybe not like right away, but within 24 hours or less. Um, so you may want to check your spam folder there. We haven't had any issues with that. Um, also, they require four proxy minimums at $10 a month, but I don't need four proxies right now. Yeah, well, yeah, you kind of do. <laughs> um, 
on that. Um, and this comes back to perspective that I talked about earlier. Can you see where the perspective is in this? And I'm not, whoever wrote this in, you know, I mean, thank you for sending it in. I, I don't, I don't have a name associated with someone else copied and pasted and put it in for me. I have no idea who you are. Thank you for bringing it in, but I'm going to use this as a little bit of an example here. The cost is, is, is $10 a month, but I don't need four proxies right now. So the thinking is, is that, um, I only need one proxy now, so I should only pay two dollars and fifty cents right now, versus ten. Whereas my perspective, which is, which shouldn't even come across the radar, it, it should be instead. Oh yeah, I know I'll need four soon. I'll get them all right now, and then I'll push myself to get those four. If that didn't sink in, let me give you another example. I don't need. I only need one employee right now, but I'm going to hire four employees because that will force me to get them enough work. I'm not going to get one proxy for $2 and 50 cents a month. I'm going to get four at $10 a month. And that's going to force me to find jobs for those other three proxies. Are you guys and gals tracking with me on this? This is perspective. Really important. It totally shapes and dictates, I mean, everything, <laughs> seriously. So look, guess what? My answer is pay 10 bucks, get the four proxies and hurry up and use up all four now because I, my team will work their tail off to get you 10 proxies and that just filled up three of those. So pick up the pace. And check your spam folder. And if you don't like anonymous proxies, which they've been working fine for us, and they've been working okay with other people, then open up the chat box in the Facebook group and say, hey, I'm not digging anonymous proxies. But they're working for a lot of people. But hey, there's maybe some more out there. Thank you for the question, by the way. Whoever you are, don't want to come down hard on you. Okay, so in the Google My Business process, you set forth in the in the call zoo training. I must have missed something. Uh, where is the trigger that causes the Google powers to manually review your uh, listing? They don't, and they won't ever. I purposely left out the last section of that. If you want me to give you the last section of that, all you got to do. I say all kind of flip. Um, you need to make sure your site's ranking on page one. You got to make sure you have your social signals up. Um, you got to make sure you got the pictures, like the photos I show in the in the training. Okay. You got to make sure you have the photos and everything. You got to make sure you have the right type of address that I go into extreme detail. I show example after example. I show you the photos that you got to have in there, the Photoshopped ones. Okay. When you got all that squared away, just contact support. We'll give you the bare last piece of the puzzle, okay? And I posted a while ago, smart member figured out the last piece and he posted in there, two of my niches just got a Google Places or a Google three pack. Sweet, right? So it works, but it's not a hack. You can't just like, uh, I'm just gonna squeeze my way into this three packer. They're not gonna happen. You gotta do all the steps. Basically, you gotta work through module one through nine. 100%. I'm not saying you work through it and like know it in your brain. You got to work through it and do it. <laughs> Sweat and, and get the results. Then you're ready. Okay. And the reason I, that I leave out the last, the last video is because I don't want people, because I know what people do. They'll just skip everything and go right to there and they'll ruin it for everybody. And let's be honest here. You want to build a real sustainable business or are you just thinking about tomorrow? Oh, just just tomorrow, hunt and gather tomorrow, no foresight. No, you want to think about a, a sustainable business model does not depend on these kind of hacks. So it's just a nice little bonus, just kind of a fun little bonus. But it's never going to replace all the hard work and efforts of having a nice site that's ranking in the SERPs above the fold. Nothing will replace that. Nothing will replace paid traffic once you got it dialed in and you know it. 
This is just a little added hack bonus. That's it. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a sustainable business. You, you, you can never sell that business. So, uh, can Cloudflare, no, Cloudflare cannot be replaced for, uh, your footprints, but, um, good question though. So whoever sent that in, thank you. Um, uh, we got a couple more and then I'll get into, we'll keep moving on here. Um, I have one Firefox profile, uh, that I have for a live journal Tumblr, and now I want to use it for three private blog networks. So far, so good, right? So far, so good. Should I create a different persona for each private blog network? No, you don't need to. Again, go, go back to module two, all the way at the bottom at the very end, open up that confused about proxies and private blog networks. Take a look at that. You do not need to. Okay. So let me go through. I am looking. Okay. So I am. Uh, okay. Yeah. My assistant told me about this. This is a good question. I actually totally forgot about this. this is this right here. What I'm about to share with you is an entire freaking course in like five minutes. And for some of you take action on what I'm about to share because of this person's insight to ask the question is, is going to change your, your, your life. If you decide to, if you decide to see opportunities or see obstacles. Okay. I am looking to make some quick cash right away. I don't like that statement. There's no such thing. Um, anyways, let me move on here. Um, you provide a bonus with the two Viper. This was way back in the way. Um, training about taking videos off of yellow pages and other services and ranking them. This seems to be an awesome way to get a foot in the door. It is, uh, with local customers and provide value. I need to add like this kind of section to like the course as, as an, as another module. This is a, you're about to learn a really cool way. Um, and, and, and when I show it to you, you're going to be like going, holy smokes, why are not other people doing this? Um, can you speak, um, of the legalities? No, but you can talk to an attorney about it, uh, of, of taking someone else's video. I'll, I'll cover how you do that. Uh, but I'm not giving legal advice and this is already sounding really bad. It was sound good right now. It sounded horrible. I was like, wait a minute, legalities. It's not, it's not what you're thinking. Uh, of someone else's video, blah, blah, blah. I realize that you aren't a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Uh, but I was looking for some clarity on this. Um, what would your uh, response be? Blah, blah, blah. I would. Uh, okay, good. Appreciate your support. T and they rock. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. So let's get into that. So this is a super cool method uh, on here. Where is this right here? Okay, so there's a whole bunch of these um, YouTube channels like uh, Yellow Pages, um, Lawyer Pages. Um, just go through any citation and the major ones will have their own YouTube channels. And why do they have their YouTube channels? They have their YouTube channels because... Um, when you go to sign, okay, because citations are such a bunch of baloney. Um, so you go to sign up for a citation and, and the minute you do, you're going to see it. Cause it's like five people will call you a day until you block them. Um, is that they sell you like a whole bunch of crummy packages like this pretend SEO junk and, Oh, we'll send a film crew down to make your YouTube video. And there's literally a half a million of these things out there. Just what I'm about to show you. So here we go. So it, this is just yellow pages. There's tons more of them out there. So this was just done like hours ago. These are hours ago, people. And there's, I don't know how many there's in this channel. There's probably a hundred thousand of these videos in this channel. So let's just take a look at this. Um, all right. So, <laughs> yeah, this is so crazy. The, these people pay like thousands of dollars for these videos. They're useless, but in the, in the right hands, they're money and you're the right hand. So let's just take this. So th this was just put up uh, 24 hours ago. It has seven views and guess who the seven views are, you know, mom and dad and you know, the owners of the company. So let's just take a look at this. So this is Fort Lauderdale, right? Florida auto tires. So let's just take a look at this. And it's going to be a pretty decent video. I mean, they, they, they do a pretty good job with the videos on here. Let me just unplug that. So listen to that. 
I have no volume on here, so uh, that you guys can hear. Sorry, but anyways, they're um, yakking away about this stuff on here. This is actually this is one of the worst videos I've seen on here. Four corner uh, auto tires, but let's go back. This is not made the best example, but this will only get views. Look, there's one that was just done. I mean, they don't even have the title right on here. It was, it was just uploaded this very second here. So um, let's continue. Uh, storage, self-storage, okay? Self-storage can be a niche, right? Um, it's five views 22 hours ago. Um, it is never going to get more than 10 views in the next 10 years because it's sitting on this dumb channel here. There's just no place it's going to go. Um, and so there's already a video here. So the tactic is, is, is that you come in, you actually contact the craft shelf because they'll have a phone number on here when you play the video and say, hey, I know she just got a video uh, from Yellow Pledges on there. Um, how would you like me to rank your video on page one where it can get some real views and we can actually track those views by putting a phone number on there and then you'll know exactly the value that I'm providing, blah, 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 blah. And they say, yeah, that's fine. I just need your permission to download it. You download it. You use this little app up here. What's it called? Um, video download helper, video download helper. It's a free plugin with Firefox. You play it, you press this button, you download it, and then you can upload it into an optimized channel. That's basically it. Let's look at what else has been in here in the last day. You can see how many of these, this one channel uploads these in a day. Now we go back a year. There's way over a hundred thousand. No problem. There's way over half a million, if not millions, of these things out here. Uh, orthodontist. Are you kidding me? It's gonna be a nice video going throughout the office. Blah 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 on here. But guess what? Nineteen views is all just from the office people. Oh look, Debbie, look at the, view, the new video we got. Blah, blah. But no one's getting it. And it's not. Rent. It's sitting here. There's no traffic here. <laughs> okay, it's crazy. So you can just kind of go through these things and we can find some other kind of more regular niches on here. Um, Steamway LLC. I mean, what kind of title is that? This is carpet cleaning, right? Um, you know, auto body service. You bet. Look, these people have already invested thousands of dollars into these dumb videos. Okay. And, and finally you're going to get them in front of traffic. Okay. Um, Dental Cancer Center, that's, um, let's just go through a couple more and to get find some more traditional. You can just go through these for like hours, there's so many of them. Um, so Veterinarian, Harley Davidson, Tire, what else do we got here? Uh, Painting with a Twist, not quite sure what that is. Uh, what is this? Custom Broker, what are these titles? Automotive repair. So this is some kind of mobile mechanic. Totally legitimate. Um, you know, we pref I prefer, and I would suggest you get, you know, 10 to get more niches where the niche goes to the customer rather than the other way around. Um, plumbing. You know, and what is this? This is some, some Elton, North Carolina. I mean, how easy would we to rank that video? This is uh, another air conditioning. I mean, they're, they're all paying for the advertising on here. I don't know about pottery and barns. Home improvement. So this is like a, some kind of contractor, handyman type person. I mean, it's super easy to rank these things. Um, foreign language translator. Interesting. Uh, there, there's definitely markets for that, by the way. And that's more of an international market. Um, asphalt. It's like driveways and stuff like this. Uh, taxi, Boise, Idaho. I remember Boise, Idaho. My mom was the, uh, she worked at the, um, the Capitol building there in Boise. It kind of looks like a exact same structure, architectural structure as the White House, just a little bit smaller. And, uh, this is what this, uh, uh, she got to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger and Arnold Schwarzenegger came in there. Uh, anyways, sidetrack. Um, Auto glass, how many, you know, auto glass niche? I mean, here we are, this is right there. Uh, it, w there are, I can sift through millions of these things. So let me just make sure that the, the they're not all going to be proper. Dermatology, that could work. Chiropractor, yes. Um, animal emergency, I'm sure. Transmission, so a transmission definitely is huge money to be made on that. Uh, 
law offices. It's kind of a general attorney. Uh, plumbing again. She's a lot of plumbers. More storage. Um, look, this is just one week ago. We we spent we we spent all day and night long going through these auto salvage. So like a towing company. More a lot of plumbers. A lot of plumbers on here. Window tinting, you know. Anyways, you get the idea. So what you do is you come in here and you're gonna kind of look at. There's so many. This is just one channel. There's like yellow pages in every country, and there's like a ton more of these kind of things. There's a, there's a Yelp. There's all these things on here. So you come on here, and you that you got like a window tending, you know, and they, they probably clean cars and exotic cars and stuff like this. And and you just want to take a look at the video and just kind of see, hey, if I got this video to, to rank on page one um, for, you know, their city, and you do a little research and, and, and look at it, um, would with this convert and you, you know, you can, you can then edit these things and put the phone number and some call to actions on here, stuff like this. Then you just come up here. It's like right in this window clean here. You just come down here, window tending right there. I would just add it, boom, download it with their permission, upload it. And then I would, you know, and then I would rank it. So anyways, that's that. It's a good question. There's a whole business model you can build around that. Um, let me get back to the questions on here. That, that was a good one. Thank you for put that in. I got one more here, and then uh, we'll, we'll keep going here. Um, I just watched. Hang on one second. I just watched your uh, master your master domain. I guess it was the replay and building your. Yeah, that, that was the replay building your private log networks the right way. I've got a few private blog networks uh, made the guru way with you know, wiki links, YouTube videos, etc. Although most of the posts do have 600 plus words. And of course, they were all built on the same Firefox profile. Exactly. Um, if I edit these, would that make sense or would it be a red flag? I guess the links drop off all the time. So deleting a few links is not a problem. Um, is there a way around the same Firefox profile on here? Um, I've made private blog networks in two formats, niche specific and city specific. Okay, that, that, that'll work too. Sure, that's a good idea. Um, so they have different types of relevancy. Makes sense. Do you think Pacific, uh, city specific private networks are a good idea? Yeah, I, I mean, yes, that's perfectly fine. So... Let me just address the first question. First of all, um, as far as uh, private blog networks go, you know, basically f finding a, a domain that hasn't been spammed, and then uh, either just the simplest, dirtiest down way to do it, and especially when you're just buying the domains at cost. I mean, what a brand new domain will cost. Um, just going back to the way machine. Now, not all can do this, but nah, at least half can. Um, you just go back in the Wayback machine and you just find kind of a good version of the home page, and you kind of you don't have to duplicate it like exactly, but it can you know you can copy the text word for word. Uh, try to you know t capture an image of the header, put it in. If they have a whole bunch of pages, you might just want to reduce that down to you know an about us and a couple other pages, and then just somewhere in there put your link like you're a sponsor or maybe you're paid advertising along the side widget or something like that and just link back to your site and then just leave it alone. You're done. Boom. Okay. You, you know, that's it. You're done. No more. Move on. Next. So that's the simplest, easiest way to do it. Um, when you study backlinks, which is primarily what we do, we look at our competition and we just study the backlinks. It's exactly the same information we share with everyone here. Um, because that's really what you're doing. You're just reverse engineering. And what you'll find like 95% of the time is that although everyone says that relevant links are the most important, you look at your sites and your niche ranking number one, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Only five or 10% of their links are coming from relevant niches and the rest are just coming from wherever. But they're ranking number one, two, and three. What's going on here? Exactly. So take note of that. That's perfectly fine. So you can just take these private blog networks and just just repurpose them. 
Um, you can just copy them from the Wayback Machine and just send links back. This is not theory, folks. I mean, exactly what we're doing is exactly what you're doing. Okay, it's just I'm just a few years ahead. That's all. Um, and it works perfectly fine. And then if you want to repurpose these, it's perfectly fine to repurpose them to change the topic and everything like that. And you're you're fine. The whole core of it is just is just the backlinks that's coming to the site and passing through and going to yours. That's really what it comes down to. That's it. Um, if you want to get city specific and make a site city specific, I guess that's fine. You probably want to do a little extra work and get some local backlinks in, but I would just be plowing through these things. I would just be, you know, we're not, when I say plow through, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm being careless about this because I'm not saying take 20 backlinks and, 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 and throw them back. No, 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 no. Six at the most, one to your site and then do five link exchanges. That's at the most. Otherwise just forget it. Just do one boom to your site. Next, move on to the next one. Okay. All right. So now I want to get into, I want to talk about a topic um, that, um, now we just get a drink here. I mean, that's crazy. I got another webinar after this. It's 10 o'clock my time. And then I got a 16 hour flight. Long, long day. See today, look, every day for me is a 10 to 15 hour day. Guaranteed. Today is like a 26 hour day. Yeah, I've been up, it's 10 o'clock now my time. I've been up since five o'clock in the morning, pounding it left and right. Um, and another two hours I'll have, I'll have an, uh, another webinar after that. And then I get, get some others. I haven't even packed. I, I, have, I have no packing. I'm going to be gone until the 30th. I, I haven't even packed. But the cool thing about that is I only wear black. I wear black t-shirts. I have like 20 of them. I wear black pants. I have like 20. You get the idea? So packing is not a big deal for me. But anyways, so let me share with you. Now, what I'm going to share with you here is I, I need to add a very important caveat. The way that I'm going to show you to do this is going to appear super simple. And I'm, I have nothing to sell you. Right, this is nothing. I'm just I'm sharing this with you. So I'm not gonna tell you, um, but you need to understand there's a lot that goes on. This um, I've spent. My company has spent um, over a half a million dollars doing what I'm going to show you right now in ads, with obviously a different account because I don't want to show our ads that are going on, um, and we've messed up a lot. Um, and one of the key factors here that you need is that when I get done doing this, you're going to want to just skip everything that you're doing and only do this. And it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. You need to continue what you're doing. You need to get that Google trust. You need to get up in the, uh, rankings. You need to get your niches up in the rankings and then you do this and then you have multiple incomes of stream and then this works. You need that Google trust. Google wants to know that you're already a cool guy or gal in the neighborhood. Okay. Otherwise the, the numbers ain't going to work. Okay. But if you can follow through and do this, then you're going to have two really solid income streams. So here we go. So this is nothing new. This has been around for at least four years. Um, and Google actually allows you to do, um, basically pay per call. So you're not paying for a click, you're paying for a live call. And for us, that's like completely awesome. So this is just how you do it. There's going to be a replay here, but you basically, and, and this is, uh, this isn't my normal account because I don't want to show my normal account. Um, so this is just another email and I just don't have a setup. But anyways, just ignore the big red banner here. So campaigns, boom, pop this down. Uh, we're going to go to search network only. And then from here, we'll just uh, name this uh, the call to campaign. And then I'm going to do the call only. Okay. Uh, okay. Call only. All right. And uh, on here, I want to uncheck this because the other Google networks on here um, do not follow 
uh, this call only, at least not currently, but it will. So what I'm showing you is only growing. It's really cool stuff. Um, so basically what, what happens here is that um, you only get charged when someone calls. Not clicks on your site, calls. Um, I'm going to show you the numbers here in a second. So uh, let me choose on here. So it's what you really want to be very specific about this. So I just use my default um, Phoenix. Uh, here I'm going to add that. And uh, saying I missed me on my local weekly call. No, I messed up. Um, and uh, then I want to add some nearby because I know this area. And, uh, and I, I'm going to do handyman as an example. So Phoenix, so I'm, I'm going to do, obviously, if I'm a handyman, I'm going to want to do um, Scottsdale. So I'm going to add that. Uh, if I'm a handyman, I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to do Peoria and Mesa and Chandler. So uh, let me just add Mesa in here, Arizona. You get the idea, okay? You, you can you can also do this by radius and stuff too. Anyways, so I'm just going to target specific that, um, and uh, for the location options on here, uh, it's really important. You got you got to press people in your target locations, otherwise, well, this, this just will just fail, and you'll be like ah. Um, and here, what you want to do is you want to come down. And you always manually do this always. So. Um, for my handyman, I'm going to bid a maximum of two bucks per call, not click. And I'm going to do a maximum of 15 bucks in a day. Okay. Um, delivery method. I got someone else who does all this. You always want to do standard, not accelerate. Accelerate is like, we're just going to spend your money as fast as humanly possible. No, nope. slower down. Um, and I was, what, what this is amazing about this is that you, you can just set the date. So I'm going to run this from like Wednesday to Friday from exactly 9 a.m. in your local time to 4 p.m. <laughs> so you can, it's awesome that way. Um, so I'm going to save and continue. And uh, here's my ad group on here. I'll just, I'm just going to uh, fill out the information really quickly on here. So I'm just going to do, um, uh, done right now. Handyman, I just named the company. And I'm going to use my call zoo. Uh, I would use a, a call zoo number, um, but I'm just, just a fake one that I'm using right now, right? Um, the description just wants something catchy in the front. I'm not here to give a course on that right now on here. Um, Need uh, handyman. Tap to call. See that the tap right there. Bam. If they click on here, they're not gonna. They can't click on the site. That's the thing. They got the tap. Okay. Um, and then you put some kind of benefit on here. You know, I don't know. Just put a <laughs> benefit here. All right. Uh, display URL that's going to show on the website. I'll just put uh, the call to do for right now. And uh, here you have to put in the HTTP. Uh, Callzoo.com. Okay. Um, I don't use the call to do forwarding stuff. I put my own numbers. Um, and, and, and the keywords here. So this is, I'll just, we, we get, you get a lot more in depth on keywords, but I'll just show you the basics right now. So I'll just do uh, um, handyman. And this is just gonna, if they, someone types in a handyman, it just means handyman in the area that I selected, right? Uh, I'm going to do a handyman. Um, Phoenix, and I do a handyman. Scottsdale, there's a whole bag. I could come up with 20 or 30 of these, but that's, that's not the point here. So look, th this is what's cool. Remember, it's two bucks is the maximum I said I'll pay for a call, not a click. And let's go ahead and estimate the what the traffic is in here. So basically, the average cost per call <laughs> It's going to be less than a buck. I'm going to get about 10 per day, and I won't even spend my 15 bucks. Now, let me ask you something. If we just go out on a search right here, and let's just do uh, handyman um, leads. Let's, let's see what the market is. Handyman leads. 
This ain't going to be live calls, by the way. This is going to be like shared stuff. Anyways, you can go through these. And uh, so this is free contract release, blah, 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 blah. I didn't pre-plan this part of it. I don't know what this pricing. Okay, there we go. So I, what you find is about twenty bucks. That's usually the market average for something like that. See, one hundred and free is this one Julian. I'm not gonna tell you right away, but just trust me on this. For an email lead, this dedicated is gonna be around eighteen or twenty bucks. For a live call, but let's just say it was twenty bucks that, that that you charge. So you could come in and say, "Look, Mister Miss Handyman, Man, um, I'm going to deliver at least ten calls per day, um, and it's going to be you know eighteen dollars per live call. It's only dedicated to you. And it's only coming within your hours. And it's only coming within your area. Plus, you're going to have your organic searches, which is going to double that. Okay." But let's just talk about this. But you got to have the organic first before you can do this. Otherwise, you, look, it, see, the thing is, is that people do these and they, and they follow through like what I'm doing right here. And then they go out and do it and they go, but it doesn't work. That's because you don't have, you, for whatever reason, Google don't like you. Okay. Until you're like a part of the community and you're like a handyman site ranking on page one and you're all cool and stuff. Then this stuff makes sense, and Google's like totally cool with you. Otherwise, they not. Okay, so just saying. So, anyways, but once you're there, this becomes a reality. So you're ranking in Phoenix, Handy Man. You can now double your leads. Okay, instantly. You're gonna literally. You're not even gonna be able to spend eleven bucks, and you're gonna get ten. And you're gonna and you're gonna charge how much for those, eighteen to twenty bucks for a live phone call. On that, okay, I think you can do the math, right? So, anyways, it's good stuff, very powerful. I wanted to share this with the group. Some know a little bit about it, some don't, because I know at this stage in the game, um, a lot of you've been through a lot. You've built your site. It takes a lot of work to do, okay. Um, You've now gone through the Firefox profiles. It takes a lot of work to do. You did it. Congratulations. You're now getting your private blog networks. You're starting to build them up. It's a lot of work to do. Next thing, you're going to start ranking. I just want to let you know that there's even more. You know, the finish line is even larger than you thought it was before. So that's that for now. Uh, let me open up the. Let me open up my slides so I can copy and paste the questions that are in here. And I gotta check my time for just a second. I gotta make sure I, I can't be late for my next um, webinar. Just bear with me for two seconds, folks. I, I uh, it's just taking a second here to look this up. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let me open up the chat box. Let me get a here. Okay, let me just go right down here. Boom. All right, so I'm just gonna go right here. So Steve asks, um, um, let me put the ch in the chat box. This is actually a, a suggestion somebody gave. I thought it was a pretty darn good suggestion. Um, so when people watch replays and stuff, they can follow their slides. So the question is, is um, will this be a se separate module? Um, yes, it will. But I'm going to, I will end up dripping the module out. I, I will just give up enough information until you've finished the first part. So you literally have to go through. You have to go through and complete the work module one all the way through. You can't. You can't just fast forward to this. It. it and I'm telling you, it's not going to work. Okay. How do you charge for calls that are not clicked on here? So, Jackie, that's that's a good question. Uh, so let me post that in here. So how do we do that? So. This comes down to how you run your business, and I've learned the hard way, so listen up on this. Um, so there, there's not going to be a perfect world here uh, where it's going to be pretty close, but it's not going to be perfect, where you've got you know, 9 out of 10 or 95% of your calls are just going to be clean new people calling in. And then so, somebody might be a wrong number, somebody might be a, a telemarketer or something like that. 
And those are the exceptions. And if somebody catches it, then you just take it off the bill. But there's not going to be, an, there can't be, that, that I'm aware of, uh, if you got any suggestions, let, let me and my program, let my programmers know, would be, I'd love to know, you know, how do we automate that? You can't. So if you've got, that, that, that we know of, um, if you've got a client or, uh, you know, as you're, as you're vetting your clients, because you've got something really valuable here, don't just take it, the first Joe Blow lunch pail that raises, oh, I love your leads, blah, blah, blah. No, don't. You're interviewing for a job here in a partnership. Be careful with it. If they're bean counters, they're not worth it. If you're charging a fair price, 18 bucks, and you know, let's let's be honest here, you're charging 18 bucks. This is a handyman. Let's say you're charging 18 bucks. Uh, they answer 10 calls. Um, out of those 10 calls, um, four of them turn into jobs. And an average, um, according to, to dad out there, it'd be $145 on average for their job in the middle of the bell curve. Uh, they got, you know, five of those out of the 10, that's 1700 bucks in business. They just got, uh, out of those 10 calls, they paid 180 freaking dollars to you. Okay. And they got that much income in. And then maybe one of those calls is a telemarketer and then they're spending an hour or an hour and a half a day or whatever, just listening to all the phone calls and just making sure they're not being charged for that one eighteen dollar call. You don't want to work with that kind of perspective. That's not a perspective you want to deal with. That's the same perspective as the proxies are anyways. You don't want clients like that. And it's going it's, to it's gonna swing both ways, right? There's going to be times where someone leaves, leaves a message or, uh, and, and, and maybe you're not being credited for it and they call back later and they get the job. I mean, it swings both ways, but it's just a small percentage of it. You want to look at the overall big picture, find a happy medium down the whole big picture. So no one's counting beans and everyone at the end of the day is a win-win. That's what you want. Why do you say that the paper call Google is not the way forward? It is totally the way forward. It, it's totally the way forward. You're totally misjudging or I've, I've not explained it properly. If you really want the Google paper click, which, which you can go to a hundred thousand businesses and say, have you ever heard of paper, paper call Google AdWords? And 1000% of them will say no. You can go to a, a thousand ad Google certified AdWord agencies for local businesses and say, could you please tell me about your Google pay-per-click, uh, pay-per-call programs? 99.99% will stumble and they will not know what the hell you're talking about. There's not a whole lot of people in this, in this realm who a spent the kind of money we have on this, um, and, and learn from it. But you, but what we've learned here is in order to make those numbers work, you need to have a local organic presence. Okay. Once you have that, then you add this on top of it. You've got two sources of leads. You've got a stronger business. Okay. You've got a stronger business because we're already depending on Google itself. So, and this also works for Bing, by the way. Okay. Which I'm, I'm officially going to declare myself the world expert on Bing. It's like 10 times harder than this. I'm, I'm officially, well, not me, my team, the expert on that. And probably one of the top five experts on the paper call with the AdWords. There's a lot more to this picture than what I'm, uh, what I'm showing too. But one of the pieces there is you've, you've, you've got to have the local presence. Google just wants a real, a, a real business, a real business. That's what they want. I'm going to start wrapping this up here in a couple minutes, folks. Uh, Steve asks on here, what are some of the other webinars that you're doing later? I do a webinar every single week. Every single week. Uh, okay. 
is is Bing worth focusing on, or is it better to do more cities and focus on Google Voice? Um, th this is what's better. Number one, start building your strong foundation of your business. Really good quality site, good content, really good backlinks, some good social in there, get a nice good Facebook business going um, for your for your niche. Get it up on page one. Phase two, get some of these you know, paid advertising in. 80% um, is going to, 80% from your paid will come from uh, Google and 20% from Bing. 20% is a tremendous amount in any business. So don't disregard 20%, it's some small amount. So you want to take advantage of, of all those. Alrighty, that's it. I'm going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you appreciated that. Uh, I thank everyone who sent in their questions. Even if I gave you a little bit of a hard time, just know it's tough love. I'm not criticizing you personally, um, but uh, rather just the whole concept and the mindset around it, which I'm sure others share. But I really do appreciate people taking the time to send those in. And uh, I will catch you on the next webinar. Take care. Bye.